Hello and welcome to episode 130 of Vokta Gaming. I am your host, the vocal terrorist, Jesse Rain, and we are here with game two of a best of five series between these two players. First up, we have our Blue Terran, currently 1-0 up from South Korea. His name is TSL Polk! And opposing him as yesterday. He is our Red Zerg. One game down already. Can he fight back to level it today in game two on Team Millennium? His name is Stefano. So we saw yesterday Polt play absolutely brilliantly. It was very, very exciting to say the least. Absolutely loved watching yesterday's game. Honestly, it was so, so good. Went over 20 minutes and Pole ended up demolishing Stefano. Stefano's basic problem for me was that he just did not uh, get the unit composition right. And uh, when he when he finally got up to what he wanted, just couldn't hold his bases. And uh, Pole essentially out-expanded the Zerg player. If you can deny those late-game bases excuse me, to a Zerg player, you will just absolutely destroy them. That is basically how it is done. So we will see what kind of openings come from these players. Once again, Stefano looking to 15 hatch, and he does so. Obviously, it's uh, slightly later than the 14 hatch that we see Koreans do, but it's not the biggest deal. And look at this. Polt. Polt, you sneaky, sneaky boy. Okay, what Polt is doing, he is two racks bunker pushing. I can guarantee that. What he will do is take this barracks, lift it up, and land it on the floor here so that these Marines will get there even quicker. Now, we will see. What has Stefano seen? Stefano has not seen that. He's going to be looking for a two racks, though. Because of what happened last game, because he's fast expanding, it makes sense for a Terran player to two racks bunker push you. It's such a good, good opening. It allows you to then expand as the Terran player. Okay, we're going to see where does the bunker go down. There are many places you can place this bunker. Here is the perfect place because what you can do is you can put the SCV in the uh, in the bunker and have him move out to this side so he can repair without being attacked. But this is nice from Stefano again reacting properly. Now what Polt's trying to do is get the worker to this side. It's not happening though. So, oh, he nearly goes to that side. And this bunker is going to be taken down very nicely. And there, bringing a second SCV. Oh, but he's not placed it quite correctly. So these uh, the drones will be able to take it down. Slightly uh, one pixel change of placement there from Polt. Meant that did not work as well as he wanted it to. And so the rush is immediately over. Oh, he's trying to build the bunker again. But Zerglings are out. Sorry, this is not going to happen. Nice placement of the Marines, though. Stefano is just building up a nice mass of links to attack in with. But his pathing is quite okay. He takes down the SCV. That was important. That is the important bit done. Now Polt either has to bring another SCV or give up on this rush. Of course, he will keep these units there as long as possible. Because it means Stefano is producing six more Zerglings instead of producing more drones. And basically not getting the economic lead that he wants. Polt's response will be to expand on this. Absolutely guaranteed. There we see the command center going up. Zerglings come in now, taking down the SCV again. This is really nice placement on the Marines, though. Means they take down even more Zerglings, forcing Stefano to make more and more and more. One Marine does actually make it up into the main base. It could potentially scout what's there. Of course, there is nothing special there at the moment. No bailing there. And the Marines here are actually going to do a ton more damage. More Marines still being rallied forward. So they take down all those things. And look at this. Ten more Zerglings being made by Stefano. Again, not making drones. Finally gets back to making drones. But at this point, this command center is half finished. So the economic lead that the Zerg expects to get with a 14 or 15 hatch just isn't there. And we can see Polt is adding two more barracks now. Uh, so he's going to go all the way up to four racks bio. There is no bailing nest right now, so there's no need to get siege tanks at this point in time. Finally, the Zerglings will chase the Marines home. But the expansion's not been landed yet, so there's no danger whatsoever. So long as he lifts that supply depot, there we go. Nice work from Polt, and that means Polt is perfectly safe. We pull some drones out, uh, some SCVs, to repair these supply depots faster than the Zerglings can damage it. He is safe. The Marine range 
will kill those Zerglings all day long. Nice moves from Stefano here though, pulling back as they go into red. Only loses one Zergling and he will take down this Supply Depot. So maybe not the best play there from Pulp, but he does not have enough units to hold off. But what happens here is Stefano scouts everything. He sees all the barracks. He sees the expansion ready. He sees that there is nothing else hidden. Really nice move there from Stefano. And now he's spreading his creep across the map, getting a spine crawler uh, in case of Hellions. But those Hellions are not there. So reactor tech lab and reactor going down. Going heavy, heavy into bio then with uh, short on upgrades to begin with from Polt. We see back at home just droning up at this point, adding more Zerglings uh, to in because he's worried about the potential pressure from this bio. Look at that, man. The creep spread, of course, stops him from bunker pushing very, very effectively. But Polt's expansion is now land landed, so his economy will soon catch up to Stefano's, or at least be a lot, lot closer to what it needs to be to give Polt the advantage here. In fact, it looks to me like he may even be expanding again. Is he going to double expand? That would be a bit ridiculous. But he did have a lot of money banked up there, and it did make me wonder. This is a nice play from Polt as well. I want to mention this. Putting Supply Depot in here means that Stefano basically cannot get Overlord drop and drop units in here, or even, uh, I think that's big enough for a Nidus, or even Nidus in there without it being seen. We have now a force of Lings on the map, just checking for any hidden bases from Polt. Anything sneaky going on, but of course there is nothing as of yet. We also have a baling nest on the way for Stefano. That is a good reaction to seeing all of those barracks. We do have a factory now on the way. I would imagine that will go straight into Tech Lab siege tanks uh, because he will want to protect his bioforce against any banelings. But we shall see. Stefano again is uh, continuing to spread his creep. He's almost halfway now to Pult's base, that's really nice, that's something he wasn't doing yesterday, and which did hurt him later on in the game, he now has speed for his feelings, but holy crap, this is a ton of bio, 10 Banelings morphing though, and those 10 Banelings can do a ton of damage, really nice surround by the Ling, stops him from start stepping, and now moves back to his Banelings, only two Banelings there, interestingly enough. The rest must be over here. Oh, we have a huge Baneling force there. And all these Marines being taken down, man. But look at this. Banelings coming into the main pulp. Does he see? He sees just in time to save those SCVs. Holy crap, that must have been terrifying. If he hadn't have seen them, oh, the damage they'd have done. As it is now, they're going to have to wait for the Spinning Force. Holy crap, he is going to Baneling bust this front. And there is not a lot there to protect it. Only a few supply depots and one bunker. That's not enough to stop a bailing bus. Holy crap, as they all finish now, this is going to do a ton of damage. They're going straight for the bunker. Siege tanks aren't out. The bunker goes down. So many speed links, so many bailings getting right into the base of Pult. Choosing to avoid the enemy going straight for the SCVs. Holy crap. This is a huge attack and oh my word, so many SCVs go down there. Finally the last of the speedlings are taken out and the Banelings are just hanging around trying to see what they can hit in the end, choosing to kill a mule and some more SCVs. Holy crap, these last two will die but he has got more speedlings coming in now to do even more damage after this is over and it very shortly will be. We will see how many SCVs he got and whether or not it was worth it. Let's take a look. 23 SCVs. Hell yeah, that is worth it. Holy crap, Holt now. So far behind. We'll look at the unit distribution. We see 31 drones to 24 SCVs. So basically what that's done for Stefano is got him back in the level pegging that he would have had with that initial early hatchery. Really nice move from Stefano and now... He is expanding, getting a double Evo chamber up as well. Here we see, going to hit those upgrades nice and hard, along with a macro hatchery. So his economy is about to spiral out of control. Polt needs to do something, and he knows that. The good thing to do would be to take down some of this creep. And there we go. Lovely moves there from Polt. This is why he's one of the top Terrans in the world. Well, not just because he kills Creep, but he knows exactly what he's doing. And he has enough Marauders here to take down this Spine Crawler. But there are Bailings there. 
Bending's going for the Marines, trying to avoid the Marauders because they are wasted on Marauders. Marauders tank so, so many bailing shots. But these Marauders, man, they are doing the damage. More speedlings being produced on the way. We have Siege Raid on the way, meanwhile, for Pult. Oh, and his Marines getting right up into the main base, but that means they clump up. Oh, the Bailey's go past, they're stuck in the corner. All the Marines go down, and this attack is over. Picks up his Marauders, and it's time to go home for Polk. Did not do what he wanted to do there. Would have been much more effective, perhaps, attacking this third base, where the Bailey's could not get there quite as quickly. If we nip back into Polk's place, we see he does have the reacted Starpot. So he is producing two medevacs at a time. But we see Stefano here upgrading from a hatchery to a lair. It, pull, it looks like wants to continue this pressure at the front, but it's hard with the bailings there. Without siege mode, it's really, really tough to pressure this front. He does have one siege tank just finished being produced now. So that should come and join this army, unless he's got it defending at home. It looks like it is at the moment defending. He hasn't brought it with his main army. 24 speedlings on the way, 22 now for Stefano. Trying to hold off this big aggressive push. And the Bailings coming through again, trying to catch the Marine. Nice splitting, but the Bailings are catching up to them. What Pult has done really well though is stop that creep from spreading towards his base. P Stefano looks like now going to counter, trying to catch any reinforcements on the way. Not going to find any. Nicely done by Pult. But his aggression is not doing the damage he'd like it to. He is losing quite a few units every time he does it. And it means Stefano now actually has the supply lead. I want to take another quick look at the units tab. 52 drones to 42 SCVs now. So the economy is staying pretty much in Stefano's favour. Especially as he now has the third and the macro hatch up. Again the speedlings attacking the marines as they try and drop out of the medevacs. There are very few marines now left in those medevacs. Time for them to go home. Hold back home being very safe using the siege tanks here to protect his main from any counter-attacking that could happen. We just have one speedling checking for Pulp's third. There is nothing there. So Stefano feels quite confident in the knowledge that his economy is ahead of his opponents. Which, as a Zerg player, is exactly where you need to be. We see the first upgrade on the way for Pulp now. Plus one attack, but plus two attack and two defense are on the way already for Stefano. Bailing speed also on the way. Now going for these elevator play. I really like this. Staying within range of those siege tanks means it is very, very hard for the speedlings to come in. And now it looks like he's going to take, try and take down the macro hatch. Retreat into range of the siege tanks. And again, so much damage being done here. But the bait is coming in. And look at this. A force from behind from Stefano. It wasn't big enough though. It wasn't big enough to take down the tanks. And as it is, Stefano now looking in trouble. This is a nice push from Paul. Stefano did not have enough units to react to it properly and now, now he's in trouble. This macro hatch could well go down. And in fact, steering forward into the worker line. Speedlings coming in now to defend it. Trying to run into those tanks, but there's still some bio there defending it. One tank goes down, will a second. If he can get that second tank, no, it does not quite happen. And now Paul in a really commanding place. Those Bailings cannot get any hits off and they cannot get within range of those siege tanks because they just all die to the siege splash. Good targeting there from Pulp. Stefano's supply dwindling. His upgrades are nearly finished. But he cannot get close enough to these siege tanks. And a second factory is on the way for Pulp. Perhaps a third in fact. I believe... Here we go. There it is. So he's going to be getting double the amount of siege tanks out. And that will really start to put the hurt on Stefano. Here comes the third now. Hmm, I'm just, just not sure Stefano has enough to buff. He needs to hold this attack off as long as possible. And then just try and run in like this. Here he goes. Attacking. Oh, Bailing's taking down the Marines. Okay, if he can take down all these tanks, he'll be fine. But he's not going to quite do it. Oh, the tank does go down. But the Bioforce there was enough to mop that up. He has a fourth base going up. That's what he needs to do. But he needs to hold this attack off. He needs to get enough units up to finish off the bio now that the sea tanks aren't there. And swarm in en masse. If he loses units a bit at a time like this, he will slowly but surely die. And it looks really, really bad now for Stefano. Again, as these tanks come to join the main army, Holt is once again in the supply lead quite heavily at this point. 
Now the question is, does Polk continue this attack or does he go home? Does he try to get an expand up? It looks to me like he wants to keep this attack up, like he wants to try and finish Stefano off. And that is a very interesting tactic to take when Stefano is about to hit, in fact has got four bases up. He will have four bases worth of production. Of course, he's using them entirely on units that are not workers at the moment. But slowly, slowly, as Polt's units die... Oh, this is nice from Polt, though. Expanding to the middle location instead of this third. But still, trying to keep this aggression up, as we see. I'm really interested to see where it goes from here. If this aggression will finish off Stefano, or if we'll be able to hold it. He's leveled off the supply once again. But he's going to lose units piecemeal. Here he comes, swarming in now. But he needs to deal with those tanks first and foremost. There's only two there. He needs to just build up a supply of units and go in. Use the Zerglings here to protect the workers. Very nice. Stick them on hold position. And then mass up here and just move. Okay, this attack needs to kill the tanks. That is the important thing. He catches them sieging. Gets within siege range and all the tanks should die now. Bailing's coming as well, but his targeting's not great. So he loses all of his circlings. Ah, oh, that was just poorly done. Was not attacking properly there whatsoever. We have an armory going down. But the biggest problem for Stefano is that he's not able to tech up. He's got four bases, but he can't build drones. He can't build new tech structures. He's pouring every single resource he's got into holding this off. And the longer that goes on, the more and more damage Holt is going to do. But this is nice for Stefano. Getting and killing a ton of workers here in the mid Holy crap, that was a lot of damage done. But the question is, is it enough? Because Polt is once again among the workers here. Let's go check. It's 38 workers killed to 17. So Stefano with the advantage there. But it's only 41 drones to 33 SCVs. Which really for a four base uh, for a four base Zerg is nowhere near enough drones. And now he's elevating siege tanks in. Okay, this is a real problem now for Stefano. He needs to do something about this army at his doorstep. If he doesn't, he is going to lose... There's one bailing coming in here. Okay, more work of the Polk going down. But uh, it delays this push, but is it going to delay it enough? I don't think so. If he loses this base, losing the main is so, so hard on a Zerg player. He's swarming units in now. He's picking off all these tanks. This is really nice from Stefano. Perhaps he can do it. But more bio stimming in now for Polk. Bailing's going down to tanks slashed once again. And, and that third base for Polk remains up. So this is nice still from Polk. This constant aggressive style. Very Marine Kingish. The constant aggression. It's 25 minutes into the game. And really, the Zerg player is still on, on uh, well, his normal tech. On Hatchery tech. Only a Bailing nest up at this point. No spine. No infestors. Nothing. Everything going into holding off this attack. Can he do it? Once again, Polt is stymied right at the front of Stefano's base. But he's done a ton of damage. And the longer he keeps his pressure up, the longer he gets to increase his economy to get his tech structures in place. And look at this. The tank's being taken down. But units once again in the main of Stefano taking down the Evo Chamber. Man, if he loses the lair as well, that is going to be a huge, huge blow. Holt very much in a commanding lead at this point of the game. And this constant aggression is so, so good. I'm telling you, this is the future of Terra vs. So just constant, constant pressure and aggression. We are nearly at the 30-minute mark. And there is nothing but Lings and Bailings on the map right now for Stefano. Holt has been controlling him this entire game. Pushing himself to the situation he wants to be in. Yes, Stefano is a base up, but that means nothing when all you can make is lings and banelings. Because Polt is pushing in, and look at this, he's even getting the spawning pool now. Adding insult to injury, it means Stefano is having to remake his pool, making a second bailing nest as well in case he loses the first. He is putting pressure on that third though, so that's really, really nice. Trying to make Polt turn around and go home, but right now, look at the supplies. 100 to 53, Stefano is in real, real trouble. He cannot make Polt go home. So he's forced to once again attack into siege tanks. He does kill most of them, but he's forced back again. Losing, he's lost his main. The lair is still up, but there's no workers there. He loses his first expansion.
trying to get another base up here, but it's 30 minutes, man. Still only on Lings and Banelings. Holy crap, that is so good. And he's going to lose them again because look at this boy pushing through now. So he's going to lose his spawning pool and his Baneling nest once again. Pole totally dominating in this game. Looks to me like he's going to go 2-0 up. And what an impressive way to do so. Ow. That is so good. Baneling nest, uh, Baneling rather, going to come in here. Kills most of the Marines and forces them back again. But our oh, siege tank set up. Bio steaming in to kill the Lings again. And man, I do not know where Stefano can go from here. He's got, you know, two and a bit bases up. And that is about it. Here we see siege tanks pushing in now. He's going to take down the lair. Easy peasy. Some harassment going on from Stefano. But holy crap. Stefano there looking pretty uh, peeved, we shall say. Loses that game in a... Oh, just a terrible, terrible fashion. Paul absolutely dominated him there with the very aggressive Marine King. Bio-heavy style. Very, very impressive from Polt, though. Okay, I will be back tomorrow with game three of this. That is on Shakura's Plateau, so that should be really fun. Can Stefano take a game from TSL Polt? We will find out tomorrow. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, you can also check me out at Temple Hub, that, uh, along, along with many other great gaming channels on there. That is youtube.com forward slash Temple Hub. Also check us out, www.scforum.eu. Join the forums and you can get your replays casted right here on Vokta Gaming every single Tuesday. I will be at the Kyoto Lounge, Barcraft in Manchester for IPL4 finals. This Sunday it's going to be sweet. Come down, check it out. It will be so much fun. We have six screens showing IPL and eight computers playing StarCraft 2 all for free. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all tomorrow.